Hello everyone, and welcome to the Mana Combine. My name is Sean, and I will be your host today. And today, we are doing a deck building guide for Core 21 pre-release. Now these packs have already been opened and everything, but we're going to sort the cards and build a deck how we regularly would with any pre-release. I'm going to go through the rules of how pre-release works, we're going to talk about some deck building guide, some deck building tips, um, and see what we can come up with. So here we go. So we'll open the box here, and we'll pull out all of our cards. Each pre-release kit comes with a D20, or a spin-down counter, is what they're called in Magic. It also comes with a guide on how to build your sealed deck pool. We'll go over this in a minute. And then you also get six booster packs and one foil promo card. Our foil promo for this pack was Chandra's Incinerator, which is pretty spicy. We might take a look at adding that to the deck based on what we have, but we'll check out the rest of the cards. And you also get uh, a deck divider as well. So as I mentioned previously, all the cards have already been opened, but we're going to sort these out by rarity, as you normally would if you were building a sealed pool to see where your most powerful cards are. So I'm going to start with the rares, for, rares and mythics first. And I usually like to sort by color. All right, so we have all of our cards laid out here based on rarity and based on color. So we're just gonna go line by line and see where our more powerful cards are. And if they're all in one color, then we'll just shift down the line in those colors as well. So we'll start with white, our white rare. I have a lot of green uncommons. Cool. So we'll start with our white rare here. Idol of Endurance, two colorless, one white. In our rare artifact, when Idol of Endurance enters the battlefield, exile all creature cards with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard until Idol of Endurance leaves the battlefield. It has an activated ability of pay one colorless, one white, and tap it. Until end of turn, you may cast a creature spell from among the cards exiled with Idol of Endurance without paying its mana cost. So pretty powerful in a white weenie deck. Um, you do get to recast your spells as, they, as long as there are cards with converted mana cost three or less in your graveyard. Um, so definitely an interesting engine to look at there. In our blue slot, we have Teferi's Ageless Insight, two colorless, two blue, a legendary enchantment that says, if you would draw a card except the first one you draw in each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. So this would be really good in a control deck or a blue-red is it deck, Prowess, which is a theme of Core 21. Drawing multiple cards, casting spells, um, very cool idea. However, in Limited, if you start drawing too many extra cards and you don't have powerful ways to win the game, you could end up milling yourself out. So that might not be a great idea, but it's a cool card. Next, in Black, we have three rares, um, two rares and a Mythic, actually. So we'll take a look at our first one here, which is Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Two colorless, one black, a 1-3 legendary creature. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life has an activated ability of three colorless, two black. Creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn. Very powerful card if you have a lot of life gain uh, or life drain abilities, uh, especially once you get the activated ability online, you can attack with a whole bunch of creatures and drain your opponent for a whole bunch of life. We have Massacre Worm here, which is a mythic. It's a three colorless, three black. When Massacre Worm enters the battlefield, creatures your opponents control get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Whenever a creature an opponent control dies, that player loses two life. So it's a board wipe on a stick for six mana, but your opponent also gets punished for their creatures dying. So very cool card. And it only affects your opponents, not your creatures, which is very good. Lastly in black, we have Karavik the Spiteful. Two colorless, two black, legendary creature. Other creatures get minus one, minus one. And it's a three, two itself. 
So every creature gets minus one, minus one, including your own creatures. I'm not really sure how good this card is. It would be good in a tokens deck uh, against tokens that are playing a whole bunch of one ones, but hurting your own creatures for a three two doesn't really seem too great to me, but we'll take a look at it. All right, in red, we have some spicy, spicy stuff here. Um, we have Chandra Heart of Fire, three colorless, two red legendary planeswalker that comes in with five loyalty. With a Her first plus one is discard your hand then exile the top three cards of your library. Until end of turn, you may play cards exiled this way. Her second plus one ability, Chandra Heart of Fire deals two damage to any target. And her minus nine ultimate, search your graveyard and library for any number of red instant and or sorcery cards, exile them, then shuffle your library. You may cast them this turn, add six red mana. So very cool card that lets you play cards off the top of your library. It's an automatic shock to any target and lets you cast a whole bunch of cards from your library with six red mana added to your mana pool. Very cool ability. Our promo here is Chandra's Incinerator, a five colorless, one red elemental creature. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total amount of non-combat damage dealt to your opponent this turn. It's a 6-6 six, six that has trample. And whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, Chandra's Incinerator deals that much damage to target creature or planeswalker that player controls. So ideally in a red deck, you're doing non-combat damage with burn spells to your opponent. The more damage you do, the cheaper this gets. This creature would fit in really well with modern burn, uh, with lightning bolts and rift bolts flying around. And also, the triggered ability, whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage, you can start doing damage to creatures as well, and not just your opponent. It's a very interesting card. And then our last rare is Heroic Intervention. One in green, an instant speed spell, permanents you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Very good um, protection spell slash removal spell. You can save your creatures from any sweepers, but also if you're attacking, you can save your creatures from dying um, and bluff the opponent out. So very cool card, a reprint that was very much needed. So if we start with the uncommons in white, we have Selfless, selfless Savior, a one mana, one one creature. You can sacrifice self, Selfless Savior and another target creature you control gains indestructible. So kind of like Selfless Spirit, from Shadows over Innistrad. If you're going into damage and one of your creatures is going to die but you really want to save them, you could sacrifice this creature to make sure they don't die this turn. Very cool card. We have a Foil Basri Solidarity, a one colorless, one white sorcery. Put plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. So very good in the counters decks when con with Conclave Mentor. Um, you get to add counters to your whole team. Um, very, very, very good card. And Light of Promise. Two colorless, one white, enchantment aura, enchant creature. Enchanted creature has, whenever you gain life, put that many plus one, plus one counters on this creature. So uh, counter oriented, very life gain oriented, would fit in very well with some life gain cards. And Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. So we might have to take a look at that uh, for some synergy. If we move over to blue, we have Teferi's Tutelage, which is one of my favorite cards from the set. It's a two colorless, one blue enchantment. Whenever Teferi's Tutelage enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent mills two cards. What that means is they put the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. So every time you draw a card, your opponent puts the top two cards of their library into your graveyard. So at the beginning of your upkeep, um, anytime you cast any spells that draw cards, very good with Teferi's Ageless Insight, actually. Miscast. A one blue instant, counter target instant or sorcery spell, unless its controller plays three generic mana. Pretty interesting. Um, very similar to Dispel that targets that counters target instant or sorcery, but it's got a mana leak ability on it. Reign of Revelation. Three colorless, one blue instant, draw three cards, then discard a card. So drawing a whole bunch of cards, discarding one card for four mana, pretty decent. There's a lot of four mana draw twos, so this is a good... Good card with a minimal drawback. And then we have Jeskai Elder. One colorless, one blue. Creature with prowess, one, two. Whenever Jeskai Elder deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. And it has prowess. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So very good in a blue-red prowess deck where you're casting a lot of non-creature spells. 
We only have one uncommon in black, which is Kite Sail Freebooter, which we've seen before in Ixalan. One colorless, one black, creature human pirate with flying. All right, so in our black uncommon, we have a card we've seen before in Ixalan, Kite Sail Freebooter. One colorless, one black, a flying one, two. Whenever Kite Sail Freebooter enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. Exile that card until Kite Sail Freebooter leaves the battlefield. So a very good card at Uncommon. It gets you a flyer, which has evasion, but it also takes a card from your opponent with a duress. Only bad side of it is when it dies, um, they get the card back. So, um, but pretty good. It definitely saw some play in its time. In red, we have Hellkite Punisher, a five colorless, two red, uh, six, six dragon with flying. That has a an abil uh, fire breathing ability of pay one red, it gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. So six mana, or seven mana, six, six, that can be pumped. Pretty good. We also have Volcanic Geyser that has an X cost and two red instant. It deals X damage to any target. So after you pay your two red, whatever your X is with other mana, that's how much damage it does to any target. Pretty good. We've got a whole bunch of green uncommons. We have Fierce Empath, two colorless, one green, one, one elf. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost six or greater, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. We also have Warden of the Woods, a uh, four colorless, two green, tree full creature, a five seven with vigilance, and whenever Warden of the Woods becomes the target of a spell or ability in opponent controls, you may draw two cards. So you can search this up with Fierce Empath and then draw two cards whenever people try to target it. Pretty good. Invigorating Surge, two colorless, one green, instant. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control, then double the number of plus one, plus one counters on that creature. So it pairs very well with Basri Solidarity and Conclave Mentor. So pretty good card. And it's an instant speed. We have a shrine here, Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, two colorless, one green, legendary enchantment shrine. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add X mana of any one color where X is the number of shrines you control. So if you control one of the other shrines, you get to add two mana of one color at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase. So pretty cool. We have Thrashing Brontodon, one colorless, two green, a 3-4 dinosaur. You can pay one and sacrifice it to destroy target artifact or enchantment. This card has been around since Ixalan, and it's definitely seen some play. It's a 3-4 body on the battlefield that can destroy an artifact or enchantment at instant speed, which is always good. And then lastly, we have Cultivate. A two colorless, one green sorcery, where you get to search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal those cards, put one onto the battlefield tapped, and the other in your hand, then shuffle your library. So a good ramp spell to get you from three to five mana. In our multicolor slot, we have Leafcan Avenger, two colorless, one red, one green, an elemental druid, a four three, that add green for each creature you control with power four or greater. And there's another activated ability, pay seven colorless, one red. Leafcan Avenger deals damage equal to, to its power to target player or planeswalker. So pretty interesting activated abilities there. Probably not too bad. And then we have Lore Scale Coatl. One colorless, one green, one blue. A 2-2 two, two snake. Whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Lore Scale Coatl. So pretty good with plus one, plus one counters. Um, also in decks where you draw more than one card every turn. And lastly, in our colorless spot, we have a five colorless, three five artifact creature golem, where you can pay two and put target card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. So pretty good with putting cards that you're milling into your graveyard or um, creatures that have died if you have the ability to shuffle your deck again, um, putting them back into your library. So very interesting ability. So we'll, at first we'll take a look at the, the rares and uncommons, and then we'll fill in the rest of the deck with um, the commons. So let's clear these out of the way for now. And take a look at what we've got going here. So I usually like to look at decks that have the most amount of uncommons available. So if we take a look here, we have green and blue have the most, white, red, multicolor, and black. Um, looking at our rares, if we put those into the play, <clears throat> I 
looking at rares, we have most of our, our rares and mythics in red and black, um, with not really too much in the uncommon slot in red and black. So this is an interesting pool so far. Um, I think based on the power level of cards, we have, we have ramp in green, we have the ability to find big creatures in green. So we could do, there's a couple of different options. We could do green and blue, green and red, or green and black. Or depending on our, let's see, let's take a look at our lands and see if we got any multicolored lands. So swift water cliffs, blood fill caves, swift water cliffs. So we have three tapped dual lands, um, not really in great colors. If we look at our commons here, we have Defiant Strike, target creature gets plus one plus zero oh until end of turn, draw a card, revitalize, gain three life, draw a card, boarded battlements, Defiant Strike, makeshift battalion, swift response, Valor Steed, Gale Swooper, Cancel, printing inventory. So let's take a look at our black here. Um, rise again. I like removal, so we'll find all of the removal spells. Put those on top. Some very interesting cards here. I think I'm kind of getting an idea of what, what we would want to do here. All right. So ideally in any kind of limited, um, you kind of want to look for your, your best cards, so your bombs. So any of your rares and mythics. If we were to take a look at what is actually good here, um, I would probably take Idol of Endurance and Teferi's Ageless Insight away. I don't think Karvek the Spiteful is too meaningful. So then that leaves us with Five rares or mythics. If we're looking at veto, and we're talking about life gain, we want to look at whatever cards have anything to do with lifelink on them or gaining life. So that would be Light of Promise, Revitalize, Alchemist Gift gives something lifelink. And then sometimes green also has some lifelink in there. Truffle Snout gains four life. And then life goes on, gains four life. Um, so based on the lack of life gain, I think pulling out Veto is probably good and we don't really need these either. Okay. So probably no white, so we'll set this off to the side. Um, maybe blue. Only if we want to draw a whole bunch of cards though. Because we don't really have a lot of prowess creatures to benefit off of that. Um, I like the removal in black. Grasp of Darkness is a premium removal spell. So we have two of those in Finishing Blow. So we could go black, green, but we don't really have any creatures in black. Um, we have in red, Scorching Dragonfire. So we might be looking at some, some ramp here. Let's see. So Cultivate. So if we're looking at our uncommons here, so lower scale Kawada, we could do green blue and draw a whole bunch of cards and put counters on it. So we'll set this off to the side, but I'm kind of looking at green and red, having a leafkin 
Avenger, and just some bigger creatures, because you get to add green mana for each creature you control with power four or greater. So let's take a look at creatures with power four or greater and green. And also in red. So not really too many. But the ones that we do have are some big boys. And then we also have um, anything in colorless that we get to take advantage of here. So if I'm looking at creatures in red and green, Kind of just rearrange everything based on converted mana cost. Okay. So if we just look at the creatures in red and green here, Goblin Arsonist, Igneous Cur, Chandra's Magma, definitely do like those. We have Llanowar Visionary, which is a mix of Llanowar Elves and Elvish Visionary. So you draw a card when it enters the battlefield, but you can also tab it for green mana. So that helps us ramp a little bit. Truffle Snout. So basically the idea of this deck would be to ramp into our big, big spells here. Five. Heroic Intervention, probably not very good in Limited. We get access to Chandra Heart of Fire. And then we probably wouldn't be doing co enough non-combat damage to cast the Incinerator for cheap, but to get a 6-6 six, six Trample um, would be good at any rate there. Let's see if we can get this open here. Six, six tramplers, so a couple of big big boys here. All right, so if we look at our, so we'll stick with red and green. Um, there definitely could be something to be said for black and green. There's just not enough black creatures, I don't think. But we'll, t we'll take a look at it. Also, I really love Chandra, so I'd like to play that. Um, so if we're looking at are one drops. So basically we want to be ramping um, pretty quickly here. So we need to find all the ramp spells in our deck. Um, so cultivate and sanctum of fruitful harvest help us ramp. So starting off in the one drop slots, we have Porticolus Vine and Goblin Arsonist. Um, Porticolus Vine is an 03 defender that can block well and you can also sacrifice a creature with defender to draw a card. So it helps us draw a card later in the game if we need it. Um, Goblin Arsonist is a 1-1. One, one. When it dies, you may deal 1 damage to any target. So that could possibly help with um, Chandra's Incinerator at another point. But we also have the abilities of Chandra's Magma that tap to do 1 damage to target player or Planeswalker, which would help with that. Um, our other 2 mana creatures, I think I'd rather have Snare Spinner. At three mana, we could use Fruitful of Sanctum Harvest to generate extra mana, grab some lands with Cultivate, and then we want to pay attention to creatures with power four or greater, which would be the Ogre. Um, we could use Llanowar Visionary for ramp. Fierce Empath helps us find our creatures. Truffle Snout, probably not too great here. And then Thrashing Brontodon is always a, a good creature to have. Um, so in four mana, Leaf Can Avenger, probably one Forgotten Sentinel with four power because it doesn't do the battlefield tapped. So there's downside to it. If we're looking at five mana, we have Garrick's Gorehorn and Chandra Heart of Fire. At six mana, 
we'd probably just do two creatures. The Colossal Dreadmaw is a good boy, but um, we have some other stuff here. And then Hellkite Punisher on the high end. 7-7 seven, seven flyer, or 6-6 six, six flyer for 7 mana. So that's what we have so far. So now we would want to look at some interaction or removal. We have Scorching Dragonfire, which is a premium removal spell, and Volcanic Geyser, which could definitely help cast the Incinerator if we're ramping into mana. Everything else in red are basically just pump spells. Uh, Ranger's Guile lets us protect our creatures, which is interesting, but we'll have to see. So we're building a 40 card deck. And per the suggestions of building a pre-release deck, it wants you to have 15 to 18 creatures, trying to include creatures with evasion abilities like Flying, Trample, and Menace. So we have vill Vigilance, Trample, and Flying. Um, so we're kind of covering our bases there. We want to look at five to eight other spells. Look for spells that destroy your opponent's creatures, make your own creature stronger, or deal damage to creatures or players. Varying the mana cost of your cards to form a curve like this. So it wants us to have a curve pretty similar to this. So one or two cards at one mana, a whole bunch of cards at two, some at three, a couple at four, a couple at five, and then a lower ends at six. So that's actually very much what our curve is looking like, curving out around, curving out through three mana and ramping into five, six, and seven. So it says 17 lands is the recommendation. Add a balance of lands to your deck according to which colors you are playing. You get basic lands from the tournament organizer. So usually at your local game shop, you have a box of lands sitting around that you can use um, to grab lands for, or you can bring your own. And then when in doubt, ask for advice. At a pre-release, you can ask other players for help. You can adjust your deck throughout the day if you're not satisfied with it. So this is what we have so far. So basically, we would probably want to stick with the 17 lands. So that means we need to have 23 other cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we have 20 now and have room for three other cards to throw in here. Which I think we could get away with adding the 6 mana 6 6 with trample. Maybe something in the 4 mana spot. Maybe another Forgotten Sentinel. And I definitely, I kind of like Sky Scanner. So it's a three colorless flying creature when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. So for three mana, red or green, um, you get to draw a card and get a 1-1 flyer, which has a little bit of that evasion that it talked about in the tip book. So that's what, this is what our red and green pool would look like with 17 lands. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 20, 20, 20 22, 23. So 23 and 17 lands would build us a deck of 40 cards. So that's what this deck would look like with red and green, which is typically a very common theme with red and green is ramping into bigger creatures. But we also have Chandra in here um, to do some damage to our opponent. And also, we're probably not going to be doing the ultimate to find spells from our graveyard to cast, unless it were to be Volcanic Geyser for a huge amount. But also, we could cast this for a big amount and then cast a very cheap Chandra's Incinerator, which is 6-6 six, six, uh, Trample, even for 6 mana, is pretty good. Um, so this deck looks pretty decent. Um, and you get the activated abilities from the Leafkin Avenger to activate as well, which seem kind of good. So this is probably what I would roll with if I would have been playing in the pre-release. The only other consideration would be trying to splash in black just because I like the removal that we have in black and with the Massacre Worm. But I would probably go with red and green for consistency. There's ramp, there's creatures, you get to draw cards, there's removal, there's a Planeswalker, there's big creatures on the high end. This would have been the way that I would have built the deck for the Core 21 pre-release. So hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe to the Mana Combine, and make sure to hit that reminder bell so you get updates whenever new videos go live. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time.